completely, if it is possible. And that is why we normally hear of resolution where orders are given. When you talk of United Nations Organization today, especially the most powerful organ of the UN is what? Is the Security Council. Please, what do we expect to come out from Security Council meetings? We expect resolutions. That is where orders are given. You either do this or we will sanction you. There is no any third alternative to that. No any third way of doing their own businesses. If this is the approach we are going to take, in addressing the issues, the conflict, the problems we may be having from time to time in our different homes, then I'm afraid we are not going to end, uh, we are not going to reach. A pleasing conclusion. If that is the approach we are going to take, that is we want to resolve. And that is why I will have chosen to change the topic, to change this topic, instead of thinking of resolving the conflict and crisis we may be having at our homes. Why not thinking of a way of managing those conflicts? Because we must face it, it's a reality. There is no way we can have two or more members of a family without having conflict. It's impossible. Even the best of all Muslim families we can think of is the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the Prophet himself was the head of the family. There used to be conflicts. There used to be problems. So it is not reasonable to be talking of resolution when we are to address problems we may be having in our families. But instead, we should actually practically think of ways of managing those conflicts and problems as they arise. Because the moment we resolve one, if we are to resolve, another one will come up immediately after that one. Unless, if you want to pass a resolution, and you know what is the resolution to be passed in such an instance, is to call for divorce. That is the resolution. That is what we solve the problem entirely. You live on your own, the husband lives on his own, the wife goes on her own, and perhaps the children will have to live their own lives as well, which, of course, we do not pray for such a situation to happen in any Muslim home. So what I will be discussing today, uh, my chief host, will actually, if at all, will have very little to do with resolution, but will have more to do with management of crisis and conflict in the Muslim home. The reason why we should think of managing instead of resolving the conflict we may be having in our Muslim homes. You are welcome. <laughs> to be thinking of managing the crisis, as I said earlier on, because this is an unending crisis. It is a crisis that is not expected to come to an end one day, unless if you have chosen that option of separating from one another. But if you are choosing to continue to live as husband and wife, there is that tendency that the moment a crisis ends, there is going to be a foundation being laid for another crisis to follow. Then you will, you will have to think of ways of managing those crises. Uh, in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, let's begin from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In verse, uh, chapter, Surah Al-Nisa, that is chapter 4 of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, verse 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this verse, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا عَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا In this particular verse, we 
can see clearly what Al Quran Al Kareem expects from every family. What is expected of a man, the head of a family, and what is expected of a woman as a member of a Muslim family. The way both of them should react in any case of conflict or crisis in their families. This verse of Al Quran Al Kareem actually addresses the men as heads of the family. That when wa ashiruhunna bil maarufi. You should try, in as much as possible, to have a very cordial relationship with your wives. You should deal with them in an honorable manner. Ashiruhunna bil maaruf. Then here comes the point of whenever a conflict arises. Fahin karih tumuhunna. It's a reality that you may not likely, you may not likely uh, be satisfied with the way your wife will be behaving sometimes. You may have a kind of hatred for any part of her attitude. Then what is the, what is the next thing you are going to do? Then the Quran reminds you, فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا It is possible, it is not infeasible, that a woman may behave in such a way that you may not like. But what will play down that one that is annoying you in her is to quickly remind yourself of the positive part of the same wife. Do not think always of the negative part of your wife. In any case, you have a cause to think of a negative part of your wife, then Quran tells you that you must quickly remind yourself of what is the most beautiful of her character. Even in a case when you can say, some people may claim that I have examined my own wife, my own partner. But I've not seen any positive thing in her. Even if that is the case, which is very, very remote, I believe. But even if that is the case, the Quran still tells you, in to muhunna, even if you don't have any way of absorbing her, any way of thinking positively of her, there is another way out. Fa'asa an takrahu Allahu fihi khayran You may not know. The offspring of that particular wife may be something that will transform the life of both of you, both in this life and in the life to come. This is part of And I would like to tell a story in this perspective, in this particular juncture. It is reported that one of the great scholars and imams of Islam, Ali Imam Malik bin Anas, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. On the day, Anas, who was the father of Imam Malik, on the day he was introduced to his wife, the mother of an Imam Malik bin Anas, he actually disliked her. He did not like her in any sense. You talk, you talk in, terms of, in terms of beauty, in terms of the family background, there, is, there was nothing that attracted Anas to the mother of Malik. But why did he accept to take her as a wife? Because he was reminded of this particular verse. That although you've not seen anything good in her, but you can make it try, make it a trial. Fa'asa an takrahu fa'asa an takrahu shay'a wa yaj'alallahu fihi khayran kathira. Then what was the outcome of that presum pre pre presumably an unsuccessful marriage? The outcome of that marriage was that great scholar, Al-Imam Malik bin Anas, rahimahullah ta'ala. And this was reported after Imam Malik has become somebody that, that was reckoned with throughout the corner of the globe, in every corner of the globe. That even initially, the father did not like his mother. They, uh, they, uh, uh, there was nothing that attracted the wife to the husband. But because he was reminded of this verse, he accepted that this is what Allah has designed for me. This is what Allah has recorded for me as my wife. Then I would take her 
and accept her as it has come, then the outcome was very, very nice for both of them. And that is why Imam Malik and Anas, one of the great scholars of Islam. In a, in a, a, a tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as a commentary on this particular verse of Al Quran al Karim, what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us? And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in one of his authentic hadith traditions, said it clearly: لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن كره منها خلقا رضي منها خلقا آخر لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن كره منها خلقا رضي منها خلقا آخر In no circumstance should a male Muslim have or aid a female counterpart especially his wife. لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنا There should not be any element of hatred between a Muslim and another. Especially a male Muslim and a female Muslim. The counterpart, the wife. Why? In كريها منها خلقا Because if something, if you describe something of her character, of her attitude, رضي منها if you think deeply, positively, you must see something that will be attractive in that very woman. But our problem today, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do you know where our problem lies today? The problem is that we are looking for a woman that will be perfect in every respect. We are looking for a very beautiful lady. Sometimes, uh, the prescription by some, by some people planning to marry, if you, if you should listen to them, you'll be surprised. The kind of things they will be expecting from their proposed partner. We will be looking for a very beautiful woman, for example. And at the same time, you want to see that woman as being very obedient to you. At the same time, you want such a woman to give back to a scholar like Imam Malik bin Adas. At the same time, you would like such a woman to become a professor and the head of a university. That is our problem always. We want a woman that will be perfect in all respect. We don't think the way Al-Quran al-Karim has ordered us to do, that we should not do that way. Your approach should be different. And the way the Prophet Sallallahu has advised us, لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن كريها منها خلقا رضي منها خلقا آخر It may be possible, but I think the, the, the chance of such a possibility is very, very narrow. That you have a very beautiful wife, uh, at the same time, very, very intelligent, at the same time, excellent in character and attitude and morals. At the same time, a very good achiever in terms of material achievement, and so on and so forth. Please, if you are looking for such a perfect woman, it may not be possible always to get one. But the best way to uh, continue to live as members of one human community is to adopt the approach preached in the Quran al Karim and the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you, you will be expecting to see something that will be negative of your partner and she will be seeing from you at the same time. But the only way for both of you to continue to manage the affairs between the two of you successively is to whenever you see a negative thing from your, from your counterpart, you quickly remind yourself of the best and the most positive things in her or in him, as the case may be. Uh, this is the preamble I want to give to, to this lecture. And from now on, 
I will now be giving us the practical ways that I think that if we should follow, if we follow them, inshallah we should be we should be able to manage the crisis or the conflict we may have in our Muslim homes, inshallah ta'ala. The first principle I have here with me is that you should see your partner, whether you are the husband or you are the wife. See your husband if you are the wife or if you are the husband, look at your wife as your partner. Don't see her as a slave. Don't see her as somebody that is subordinate to you, that must always listen to you while you give orders. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best of all mankind during his own lifetime sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a verse of Al-Quran al-Kareem revealed on him in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verses 28 and 29. Allah says, Ya ayyuha nabiyu kulli azwajika in kuntunna turidna al-hayata dunya wa zinataha fata'alayna umatja'i kunna wa usarrih kunna sarahan jameela. Wa in kuntunna turidna allaha wa rasoolahu wa addara al-akhira fa inna allaha adda lil muhsinati min kunna ajran azima. The reason for the revelation of the verse I've just recited to you is what I've referred to earlier in the beginning of my presentation. That even the best family you can think of is that of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best home, the best Muslim home. Those instances of crisis and conflict in the home of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it got to a stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself had to intervene. A crisis between the prophet and his wives, the mothers of all believers, Ummahat al mu'mini radiyallahu ta'ala anhunna. Getting to a stage that a verse to that effect had to be revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to intervene in, in the crisis. And what was the intervention? The divine intervention is what we read in this verse. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having judged between the two parties, had known that the wives of the Prophet وسلم, are the ones actually who are trying to inflict a form of injustice on the Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet has been condoning all those acts from them. But when it got to this stage, Allah gave them two options in this verse of Al Quran al Karim. That is either you remain one honorable wife of a prophet of Allah. If you have chosen to do that, then there is what I have, what I have preserved for you as rewards in this life and in the life to come. But if you have chosen the other way, it's equally good. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Allah ordered him that you should tell them that if they can no more live as honorable wives of you, of the Prophet of Allah, then tell them, فَتَعَالَيْنَا أُمَتِّعِكُنَّا وَأُسَرِّحِكُنَّا سَرَاحًا جَمِيلًا Then you should come forward and let me know your request. فَتَعَالَيْنَا أُمَتِّعِكُنَّا if you can no more bear with me as a prophet of Allah, with the little I can provide for you, then let me know your request. I will actually give you such a request, then let you go your own ways. Allah commanded the Prophet ﷺ to tell the mothers of all believers this particular statement when there was a crisis. But the point I'm trying to reach by quoting this verse, you know, the point, the principle number one is that we should see our wives or husbands as partners and not somebody as being subordinate. We must always listen to our orders when we are given uh, those orders. Then you know what the Prophet said? The most beloved wives, the most beloved wife of the Prophet to him was Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala. That is indisputable. 
Then the Prophet ﷺ thought of Aisha being a very young lady, that if she should be given such an option, she may likely go to the other way, trying to preserve her dignity. That who is that man who will be telling me, either you stay or you go, I will prefer to go. As a young lady, a beautiful woman, she may decide to do that one. But the prophet was afraid of her taking such a very damaging, a very, a, a, a decision that will have a very damaging consequence on her. Then do you know what he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then he invited Aisha alone, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Because others, the, uh, in age, they were older than her. They may likely consider the two hands before making the two, the, the result of the two uh, approaches before making a decision. But in her own case, she will be looking somewhere else that I'm, I'm so beautiful, I'm still young. If I go out of this place today, I will find a better place. Then the Prophet ﷺ, I say, Prophet of Allah, now told her, لا تتخذي قرارا حتى تستشيري أباك. لا تتخذي قرارا حتى تستشيري أباك. I only have one request to make. Aisha, Rabbi Allah, will you give me that request? He said, make your, she said, make your request. She was actually, she was in, 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 in anger. She was angry with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet, what was that request? Please, Aisha, listen to the verse that has been revealed on me, but do not make a, a, any decision now. Until you will consult whom? Your father, Abu Bakr Siddi. Because the Prophet knew Abu Bakr would never tell her to choose to go out of the Prophet's home. Then Aisha radiallahu anha also repeated, on what should I consult my father Abu Bakr? To live with you as a Prophet of Allah or to go somewhere else? Wallahi innani lan astashira ahada. I don't need to consult anybody before taking my decision on this particular uh, case. I have chosen to remain an honorable wife of the Prophet of Allah until the day of resurrection. Allahu Akbar. But the point here is, look at the approach take, taken by the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet was in his own position to give orders. Because you see, the relationship between the Prophet and his wives are in leaders. He was to them an husband. But at the same time, a, a, a Prophet of Allah, he could have said it con conveniently. Look, you are going to end up in hellfire. Such, such will happen to you and your family, as some people will do today. You want to leave my house, your family will never be as it is again. <laughs> but they did not do that way. Instead, she uh, was so sympathetic with her beloved wife, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and advised her not to take a decision that will have negative impact on her and probably on her family. Then he asked her to go and consult her family. listed here that I believe that if we should follow them, inshallah, instead of thinking of resolving the conflict in our homes, we will be managing them effectively, inshallah. The principle number two. The principle number two is for the husband and the wife. The cardinal principle of the Muslim family. We shouldn't ignore one simple fact. That you and your wife you are coming from different backgrounds. Family backgrounds, educational background, cultural background, and so on and so forth. It is not possible for you to think of having a wife that will be similar to you in every respect. It is good if you have a situation where there will be a very strong compatibility between you and your wife. The way you think is the way she thinks. The way you would like her to believe is the way she will do. That is fine. But don't forget that simple fact. She is coming from a very different background. She is coming from a different cultural, educational, and family background. She should take that one into consideration 
in anything you are asking your wife as a partner to do, you have to persuade her to adopt that. She may not like that way of behaving because of the background she's coming from. And this has been actually referred to indirectly in another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, إِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ خُلِقْنَا خُلِقَتْ مِنْ ضِلْعِ وَإِنَّ أَعْوَجَ مَا فِي الضِلْعِ أَعْلَى فَإِنْ ذَهَبْتَ تُعَدِّلُهُ كَسَرْتَهُ وَإِنْ تَرَبْتَهُ مَعْوَجًا إِسْتَمْتَعْتَ بِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم reminded us of the beginning of our creation as human beings our father Adam alayhi salatu was salam then our mother Hawa that the way a woman was created from our father Hawa and from our father Adam alayhi salam it was not just it's not, it wasn't that a very uh, 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 straightforward organ of Adam that was choosing to create Hawa. Then there is a tendency that a woman will always behave that way. But if you as a man, you have decided that I must treating her under any circumstance, she must behave the way I want. Then the prophet tell you of the, told you of the consequence, kasartahu. you are actually going to break her. But if you should leave her the way she has been created, but try to persuade her to adapt, to, ad to, to adapt what you are telling her to do, to have a compatibility between the way you think, the way she thinks, the way he beha you behave, the way she behaves, then you will continue to have a happy home. You will enjoy one another. So this actually is what I have called the principle number two, that you should not forget that simple fact. She's coming from a different background, and you are coming from a different background. It's not possible. And I always tell people, I have not seen two things in this life that are totally identical. Even the so-called twin brothers and sisters. If you examine them critically, you'll find they are different in one way or the other. So why should you expect a wife who was not born with you on the same day, probably not in the same town, and probably not from the same background, yet you, you accept her all of a sudden to abandon what she has been used to for the past 20 or 20 something years and started behaving the way you will have chosen for her. It is not always easy that way. But it's part of a way of managing the conflict in our, in our homes to try to understand one another. And instead of giving others and expecting her to follow, try to persuade her as the best of all mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to do with the mothers of believers as well you who are the Allah ta'ala alayhim. The principle number three, and this will be directly addressed to our mothers, our sisters. This actually affects them more. Please, do not listen to a dangerous plot that will tell you that there is equality of gender. What a man can do, a woman can do better. This is something that can destroy a home. You cannot have two drivers in a single vehicle. You cannot have two commanders commanding uh, a brigade of army. You have to uh, Accept it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has arranged his creation. It is not a question of like, the way some people would like to uh, uh, present it to you, especially our mothers and our sisters, that Islam is actually placing women in the second class position to man. No. But it's, we can uh, actually call it a kind of a division of labor. That is, you have your own responsibility and a man has his own responsibility. When a man should not come to overtake what a woman has been asked to do, then why should a woman be looking the other way? The issue of who leads, who controls the home, the Muslim home, 
Allah has already decided that. It's not left to me and you to start debating on who will lead. It is clear in Al Quran Al Kareem, Al Rajalu Kawamuna Al Nisa. Men are the protectors of women. And you, those who will tell you, look at this verse, Al Rajalu Kawamuna Al Nisa. Tell them to recite the verse until the end of it. It is not something given to men free of charge. It's also a responsibility in another way. That is the first point. It is a decision made by Allah. It is Allah's decision. That is the way He has ordered it to be. And we can never change it. I, I, I want to ask you a question. If you are still debating whether a man or woman should be equal in every respect, or whether there should be uh, somebody leading and the other one being led, then you have to think of the origin of our creation ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us history of the beginning of our creation. In many verses of Al-Quran al-Kareem, Al-Quran was referring to Adam alone, without mentioning Hawa. Until a particular stage, we started knowing that a partner was created to support him. Then why should we in this century follow that plot of starting to now debate whether a woman should lead a man or it is the man that should lead a woman. It is the responsibility given to men and we should leave it the way Allah has decided. And he has guided the men uh, also in exercising this, if you can call it authority or whatever, he has told them, he has given them directions, he has given them guidelines to follow. And this has been what we have been saying since the beginning of this lecture and what you have been listening to in so many other lectures. And it is what is reflected in this particular verse also. Not only that you should think that you are the leader, you are the protector of a family, but you should be the breadwinner for the family too. It is very bad of a man just to take the first portion of the verse and rejalu. But will not have any responsibility over his wife in terms of feeding, in terms of clothing, in terms of whatever material need she may start in need in the family. So please, my dear sisters, my dear mothers, I want to appeal to you especially on this particular issue. It is part of the faith that you are professing. It's part of the Islam that you said you believe in. To believe in that order, that this is the way Allah has arranged the affairs between the creation, between his, crea between his creatures, that a man is the one to lead the family, while a woman will actually be a very strong pillar supporting the man in such uh, a home. And that is how you can have uh, 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 a happy Muslim home that we are all looking for. Uh, and incidentally, because Al-Quran Al-Karim said it clearly to us that We are talking to ourselves here in Al-Hikmah, in wisdom. That is where we are persuading one another, giving us verses of Al-Quran Al-Karim and traditions of the Prophet to back up whatever we say. But at the same time, we have a category of people to whom we should not talk in wisdom, but instead, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ I was just reading a story recently. It happened in Japan. Muslim women, if they are telling you Islam is uh, persecuting you, Islam is not giving you your right, Islam is doing this, is doing that, you just have to look outside. Look, don't, don't look always inward. Look outward and see what women in other communities are encountering. But I will give you in this particular gathering a very, uh, a, a, a very recent experience I had when I was reading the newspaper very recently. The report was carried by Associated Press. And it happened in February, the last, last February, 2011. It happened in Japan. A woman of 75 year old, a woman of 75 year old, was carrying a placard in a demonstration in Japan. Do you know what was written on that placard? The woman's name, uh, I think I have it written down here. Kyoko, you know Japanese names are very difficult to, to memorize. <laughs> the name is Kyoko. Kyoko Tushukamoto. And she's 75 years of age. 
carrying the placard on it. Kiyoko Tsukumoto, up till today, officially, is known as uh, Kojima Tsukumoto. But she now wrote, wrote it clearly that she wanted to die as Kiyoko Tushukamoto and not as Kojima Tushukamoto. Do you know the reason for that? I will tell you. Don't forget her age. At what? 75. <laughs> Participating in, in the demonstration and carrying what? A placard written on it that she wants to die as Kiyoko Tsukamoto. It's a very uh, straightforward story. So, uh, Kyoko is uh, what we will call maiden surname. That is her surname before she got married to Kojima. But under the law in operation in Japan, it is not even a matter of choice like we have in Nigeria and some other places. It is a law obligating whoever is subject to that law in Japan that the moment you marry, you should sever the relation with you and your family. You should start bearing the surname of your husband. It, they, were not, they are not given any choice there to make. Either to use your own surname or the surname of your husband. And look at this woman at 75 years. And when she was interviewed, she said for the past 50 years, she has been fighting this war. For the past 50 years. <laughs> then I laughed. What, what is she looking for? Something that has been given to our women, our mothers, our sisters free of charge. Something that people are trying to take from you today indirectly and they are calling it for you modernization. Elijah Abdul Latif. I'm sorry, sir. Elijah Abdul Razak. Hello, dear boss, sir. <laughs> okay, Elijah Abdul Razak. We welcome our Elijah Abdul Razak. The first day I had that on my uh, when when I came back to Nigeria, I was attending an occasion, and it was announced uh, we are welcoming Elijah, and I was expecting to hear a man's name, but surprisingly, Elijah Abdul something followed. So this is a right that has been given to you centuries, uh, 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 many centuries ago, without you asking for it. Now look at a woman over there in Japan at the age of 75 fighting seriously to get recognized. She said at least at the point of death, she wants to be referred to as Kyoko Tushukamoto and not as Kojima Tushukamoto. Uh, then at this point also, this is the principle number, I think number five. Uh, my brother is reminding me that we should talk of the relationship between wives and mother-in-law. Well, we will do that if time permits us, inshallah. By this particular point, uh, let me do part of what I've been asked to do. I was asked, uh, Prof reminded me that I should be speak, uh, speaking both languages, speaking English and Yoruba. <laughs> but I've, I've confessed to him that it may not be easy for me. So I've forgotten. I'm now, I'm now uh, remembering now. Uh, pardon? Okay. <laughs> No, I want to chip in that one now before I move on. Because that is also affecting particularly our women. And I, I, I said it somewhere just yesterday in a particular gathering in, in a marriage ceremony. That instead of you looking for any other person to come and solve or manage, as we have chosen to do, the crisis that you'll be experiencing in your family, I think an intelligent woman should find a way herself of solving whatever problem she will have. We've told you clearly, it is not possible to have a crisis-free family. The Prophet of Allah did not have it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why should you be dreaming of having one? But you should always be courageous enough to try to solve your problems within your own self. Please don't look outside, my mothers, my sisters. And I will tell you a story, preferably I will tell it in Yoruba, so that the, 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 the message will uh, uh, get to a larger audience, inshallah. Uh, it, Ninu Tira Laruba Wataka. When the Babaka Feya Wuka. 
But Islam Islam First class. But the point here, Nikpe Arakoni, you know, ordinarily as a normal human being, he was suspecting Pe on Uti Yao Nio or Koninobi. In what he awo Bima Yaoba Dobering, Inuba B. Babai. A beginning Babai, she Oba Kuko Jadinli Yanya Kawako Lodina, Ola Wale Kale. Mala Moniko se oke. Ah, ile to wa legbere na lo wa le kan si o wa fi awo mi si be ibe ni wa ngbe. Iya omo bere yi wa guru njo kan pe baba alama yi ibe ni. Dorin orin ayin lo mo wura baya torun re je. Oni Aila or Maura at Awatori Bay. Tonga talk about it in slight misunderstanding. Larry, one. I want a Buruku. Got a Lumi Lelon, Konya, one Zakira, Zakira, and now one and Nuru Lenu. Only Joma B. Oconu. You are Konka and Konin to me. A woe, a room to Benny, she. Open you are Bob Weber by you are me, elected you. Oh, I be on my two beef, on my two very recognizable. Oh, I'm going to do only to work on my very quality money. And one say big bad to a poor my own, uh, bashiri, also my keeper bar and no more go. Where am I? Yeah, well, it's already how many have you been calling it? I've been a chairman, my car, more by him produce it. More about your welfare. Owangpi mali abi hamzata la ya tina ya dhullu fil bayti alladhi yalina Gadbanu alla nalida albanina wallahi ma dhalika fi aydina wa nahnu kal ardi li zari'ina nunbitu ma qad zara'u fina Zin tu mare Aha Oni Mali Ati na Ibi ta ati bere nu Ingba ati o kwe o kore Kwe kwe babo si to biyo O lori bu baba to Kwe mba ba Ekan re nye yin ya we Ma wanti ma wibè Babo si ti o biyo Ingba babo baba o si Zema po si lo ma wanti Babo lori ibu to biyo. Ima di ba 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 bi o lori ibu. Aje kwe o lori ibu ne ni. Oma to ngusa mba wi. O un o wibè yin ya wa o. Ima to ngpe kwe lo o koti e so un lo bigen. To ma kwe lo lai kwa 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 kwe un. O ane ma li abi hamza ta la ya tina. A a. E se ta ri ba ba hamza. Ya dhullu fil bayti ladi ya li na. A si ngbo wang wini o. Wani le di mbele gbe wa ya ina wa. Gadbanu alla nali dalbanina. Amaru kwen jimbi wanu ni kwe awo bimo kwenye. Eh, ewifu wa. Wallahi madhali kafi aidina. Owo jwa ke yun wa. Wananu kal ardi li zari ina. Eh, ya wa. Owa put up a very concrete defense on your behalf. Oni e yi o kuri wa yi e yi le ma wa na hanu kal ardi li zari ina bi le la wari. Awa ni le te ek bin kasi non bi tu ma ko di zara uhu fi na. Into ho basik bin zile na la wo. 
Egbe ki lara kun yi gbo bayi tan to la ko le ni o lo ba fo jade ni le tin ti la ruba ba fe kun yan leji aye an baba wa ji la ruba wo wa kisi yan ni bo ko ya ka bi o se exacta ah baba tin so fun wa imbo ni baba fo kan ti la ruba ba fe ran yanju laye to fe respect yanju on la man so pe culture man ya to ni mo so le kan elomi ori la ruba wa tin baba re baba to bi o wa gbenu le won ajuba yi won da eleji ri baba baba re na lo na ro tin in ta won in ti in o opon le ju laye o ni ke yan afa la la bi baba yan ko wa gba mu o wa di mo wa kiss waju e ni forehead e bayi ara kun ri ba gba yawo re mu lo ba gba ori re mu ni ba kiss forehead e da kun ma binu mo se o mo se gba Tabo wale la ba ko wale njore e da pe yin awa iro approach ta fe ke nini ama be yan ba wa korin na ko ma ju rin omo wura eh ko ma je ru awon rin ti o tun ma kan kun bo te wu e ko to fi boko re soro indirectly oko na si gbo yi wa nahnu kal ardi li zari'ina num bitu ma qad zara'uhu So we now continue our presentation as we have been doing. We have reached point number, our principle number six. This principle number six, the way I put it here, that a woman, the moment you are married. she should stop being your special advisor this has ruined many homes because they are not yet married it has ruined many homes because we are all here today when we give you a that's about that 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 i have got it what for the they lived with our mamas our mothers they would tell us a different story entirely but if a married woman should always consult her mother in every move in every decision she is to take in her home then she is likely to damage her home because it is on that point that a woman will now be a mother may likely showing sympathy to her it, it will appear that way to her that i'm being sympathetic to my daughter that ah even when, when i when i was ah she ba na she ba na so berin lo de de oko kini 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 wi fun oye especially awon yawo to ba gbe ko era ke ma binu i have a friend to e pe ni mama iyawo e yo funu eni bayi pe mi fe da ko eni e ke me ba mo la mo yin ki lo ki lo fi lo mo mi e please if you have been doing that you are likely to damage your own a moment and we have it in the arab world one of my teachers used to tell us when we were uh, at underground level that the way he sees it is that a married couple if they are sincere with themselves one another a woman actually becomes everything to him and he also becomes everything to her in terms of consultation in terms of seeking advices and so on and so forth but the moment you you start to looking outside especially this one in particular it relates to our women our sisters please don't take your affairs at your matrimonial home don't take it to your family home and don't table it for them for advice it may be dangerous for you to continue to maintain your married life point principle number 
principle number seven, and this is another reality we should not ignore. I believe there is no man on the face of this heart that will marry a woman without seeing something in her that had attracted him to her. It's not possible. But it may vary from a man to another. It is the beauty that has attracted you to your husband. It may be. It may be your intellectual ability. It may be your academic achievement, the way you have been passing in schools. It may be your, your character that attracted you to him in the first place. But most of our women today, the moment they get there, they abandon those qualities. They don't pay particular attention to them again. Even if you are... Okay. Even a woman... In Arab world, we have a proverb that says, Lekulli sa qitotin la qito. Don't say I watch it like that now. Even if you are as old as 50, you are a wife with your husband. You, to, you should try to preserve what he, has seen in you, he had seen in you the first day. Attracted you to him. What you dress? This is part of what Islam is calling you to realize. Don't say, after all, I'm a married uh, woman, so I don't need to uh, 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 put on something to look attractive. We are telling you that you should do this all to your husband, not selling yourself to outsiders. But at least to your husband, something has actually attracted you to her in the first place. And that thing must be sustained if you want her to continue to exercise the same level of affection and love uh, for you. Please try to note that one also. It's part of the principles that I think if we should uh, put them into practice, they may likely help us solving uh, 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 or uh, managing the conflict you may have in our own. Then now let's come back to this side. I've been to this side too much. Please, men, brothers, brothers we have a, a peculiar problem also. I'm saying this because I'm one of you. And all of us, unless very few of us, may likely be affected by this. Please don't try to make a comparison with any woman on the face of heart with your wife. Especially those you see on television screen. Yeah. Some people, the moment he sees <laughs> somebody selling herself, she's being paid for that. Those, the newscasters, if you know the budget, if you know what they get as allowances, to let them look the way you are seeing them on the screen. But he will be expecting when he comes back home, or maybe he goes to a gathering where the so-called ushers, the so-called ushers, ushering people. And the moment he gets back home, he has that one on his head that I should see a woman like this when I go back home. And if he doesn't find it that way, then the crisis will begin. Please, know that as I began with that uh, statement, if that is the only thing that is good of that woman you are seeing on the television, I know if you see the if you should see the negative aspect of her, you will never pray that she remains for a second in your house. Then why should you, you, you should you be expecting or should be comparing your own wife, your obedient wife, the woman that has being a pillar, supporting you, supporting whatever endeavors you engage in throughout your life. And for the mere reason of seeing somebody who is being paid to sell herself to the old world, you'll be expecting uh, your wife also to be. And if she doesn't appear that way, even not only on the television screen. The problem we are having, the way we mingle with one another in our places of work here is another source of crisis. Some people, when he happens to work in an office, sit in the same office, Six hours, seven hours with a woman in the same office. 
either knowingly or knowingly, he will start comparing that woman with the one in the uh, in his house, as a wife in his house. But she does something you should, you, do, you do not realize is that that woman, because she's coming out to a place where everybody will be looking at her, that is why she has pre 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 prepared herself to be attractive that way. And as I told you, if you should examine her critically, you see the negative aspect of her. You may not pray that she remains in your home for a single second. So please be contented with what Allah has destined for you as your wife. Uh, the Arab will say, Azawaju kasmatun wanasi. Azawaju is something that is predestined. Allah has already chosen the mate even before we were created. What Allah has given you, the only way for you to continue to enjoy it is to be contented with it. And that is how you will see many people, even they will have something better at home, but they won't feel content, even when they see something that is of less quality outside. Because they are not contented with what Allah has given them. So please, uh, this is another principle affecting particularly the, uh, our male uh, audience. Uh, then uh, I should now move uh, to, although I think I should not be the one to discuss this one initially, maybe Dr. Akoredi has been given that one, but I'm asked to talk of the relationship between mothers-in-law and the wives. Uh, as we said earlier on, we've said uh, uh, that a, wo a married woman should limit our consultation with our mother, our own mother. But this time around, we want to explore what is the kind of relationship that should be, that should, ex should exist between a wife and our, and our mother-in-law. That is the mother of our, hus of our husband. This particularly affects our women, our mothers and sisters also. And I want to ask you a question, please. Is there any woman among us here or elsewhere who would pray not to become a mother-in-law one day? Any woman? If you have one, please let her stand up. That doesn't pray to become a mother-in-law one day. Nobody, alhamdulillah, because I didn't expect to see anybody, any reasonable woman to pray to be one of those. Then if you have known that, then our problem will be half solved. Because whatever you do today to somebody you call your mother-in-law, when you also become a mother-in-law, you should expect a bitter experience. Kamata dinu to that. Please, that is a principle I want to give you. As you pray to become a mother-in-law one day, Whatever you give to your mother-in-law, it will be reciprocated when you become one. And at the same time, those of you who are already mother, uh, who are already mothers-in-law, I want to advise you, please, let your child, your your son, your uh, son and his wife, let them live their own lives, in as much as you are left to live your own life. It is not good for a mother-in-law to always interfere in the affairs of the, uh, of the couple. Because I know in some very bad experiences, and it is being caused sometimes by the husbands themselves. Because some people will understand Birul Walidaini to the extent of placing his wife as a slave under, um, under his mother. This is not what Islam has preached. But Islam tells you that you should place Give what is due to your mother as your mother and do not let one be affected with whatever you will be giving to your wife as wife. So you should place every one of them in their rightful position. Let your wife be your wife and your mother continue to be your mother. If you are able to have that balance in relating to both of them, then inshallah you will be having a happy home. Wherein the mother-in-law will be satisfied and your wife also will be satisfied. Uh, then to our sisters, you will also help your partners, your alphas, your husbands in this respect. 
It is very dangerous. The uh, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said it in a hadith of his that whoever has that opportunity of meeting both his parents or one of them alive, then he does not gain the license to enter paradise through any of them or the two of them, then such a person uh, has actually, uh, uh, he has actually uh, 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 lost many things. It is a good opportunity for one to have both his parents or one of them alive, to please them, to be obedient to them, to do whatever is good to them. Because that one may be a license, it may be something that will pro propel you into al -Jannah. Then if I should ask you, our sisters, who among you would not like any of your husband to enter paradise? I believe nobody will not like his husband. Uh, no, there's no one of you except she will like her husband to be uh, one of those who will be admitted into paradise. Then if you know that, it is one of the ways of helping your husband to achieve that objective, to achieve that aim by complementing his effort in satisfying his mother, even as a wife. If you do that, Allah will surely compensate you for whatever you might have encountered in doing so. Because this is part of what we are come to life to do. It's, it's full of uh, 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 examinations for all of us. It's part of what we are to combat with. When you are to live with your mother, with your father, is it that they lead you to paradise or they eventually lead you to hell? So you should please help, help your husbands uh, in a such a way that living with the parent or having your parent live alive when you are married will actually be something that will propel both of you into enter Al-Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us in doing that. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kabirullah. And the guest speaker has done many justice in a way of giving us the whole book of it. So that we begin to decode it to our own respective cases. But now, sir, like I said, we'll be having some few contributors. We have many organizations in our midst, and we have our mothers, we have our lecturers around. Our mother, Dr. Mrs. Ahmed, has been specially invited from the University of Filoni. If I'm not mistaken, the name, ma. Yeah. Thank you very much, ma. She will give a brief contribution. There, is a, there was a controversy that when, but have to lie, you all be the witness here today. The doctor said female are in the first class. She be called we. Ella only one in first class. We are in second class. But the second class, by second class, alone loma. Most of them we are diverse. They be in the mu. Arija lu kwa muna. Okay la yewa. Aha. So to the people in the meeting, do nobody know anything. Alone moi. Eh, when doctor will like, when I was in first class, king wa king fa ringi ba. So my I say no nile. She contribution. La koko. Mama wa Dr. Mrs. Ahmed from University of Illinois, so that we have a just opposing of the topic. I have In brief minutes. I will be live in Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Ashraf al Mustalin, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa salim. Ama abad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The last speaker, Dr. Alaru, has said a lot about the topic. Uh, the discrepancies or the differences between the wives and their mothers in law. And sometimes the husband and their mothers or fathers in laws. I only want to just chip in one idea about the fact that whether our parents or our in-law, we should try and respect everybody. We want to look inward into the Quran where it says, Imma ya bulugana indakal kibara aduma au kila uma 
ala taqullahu ma ufin wa la tanarhuma wa kullahu ma qolan karima it didn't stop at this it also said wa fillahu ma janaha dulli min arrahma wa qul rabbi arhamha kama rabbayani sagir meaning and your lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you be dutiful to your parents that even one of them attain old age in your, their life say not to them a word of this respect nor shout at them but address them in terms of honor it went further that and lower to them the wings of submission and humility through mercy and say my lord bestow on them your mercy as they did bring me up when i was young uh, the dutiful or the duty islam is stressing in this chapter this is a uh, chapter 4 of the holy quran verses uh, 20 3 and 24 what it is saying is we should respect everybody we are young ones today we become aged very soon and everyone who would like to do you will want people to do unto you what you want to do unto others but if you do bad to others you will want people to do bad to you yes you have gotten your child married to a son or somebody else like our uh, guest lecturer has mentioned your own daughter and the son of another persons uh, that are getting married are of different background socially economically politically and otherwise so you should expect these two people as two different entities as two different individuals that will learn to be together with time not with immediate or immediately what we expect of these two people to learn one another's ways to be able to know the do's and don'ts of one another when they come together even if there are some problems it is the right of the mother in law to call both of them and talk to them and try to solve their problems not compounding their problems you see it is a common thing especially we people in kwara state and elori in particular mother mothers in law to want to know what is going on between your own daughter and the husband islam does not want you to be so and as a kula part of the problem is poverty because most of the time the mother who want to know how much the husband is giving to the wife which is not your concern even if they are short of certain things you should assist them is not for you to compound their problems but to try to solve some of their problems for them we are you can do that if there are some things you think you can do in assistance either to the husband or to the wife in fact the way we should do it is to love our in-law uh, a mother in law most of the time instead of talking to her own daughter directly should make sure the man will love your daughter because he will see you as his own mother and some people will start asking me if my in-law is my son i say yes is my son whatever i give to my daughter i give to him even some, some things i discuss with my in-law i don't discuss with my daughter sometimes my daughter will be asking me how many you discuss this with malam i will say yes malam is the best position to solve my problems not you if he wishes to discuss with you fine if he doesn't i know him more than you now say ah uh-uh. but that is not right say no that is the way it should be so we as mothers in law should face our problems we have a lot of things to think about rather than going about gossip looking at what is not our concern and when quran is saying we should do good to our parents it's not just the biological parents the quran is talking about Similar way, the 